obviously most of us use pixels. Um, so the clock and data, or just data, um, is serial. It goes from one end of the string to the other end of the string. We won't go into the details about how it gets stripped out and each, each pixel gets data and all the rest of it, but basically it just goes from one end to the other. If there's a break in the middle, if there's a failure in the middle, that's usually where your LEDs stop working or play up after that point. Power is a little bit different. It can be injected pretty much anywhere. Um, usually the start of the string, the end of the string, and sometimes one or two or three points in the middle, depending on your voltage, depending on um, the length of strings. Do I have to inject? Simple answer is no. As long as you don't mind white's not being white. If you don't mind them being yellow or pink, or by the time you get to the far end, really red. Uh, and when it gets to the point where the voltage is too low, those last few pixels just play up big time. They'll flash, they'll flicker. Um, you'll end up with inconsistent information being, being passed on. So, yeah, in reality, you need to data inject, or power inject, I should say. 12 volts, you can get away 80 to 100 pixels, sometimes more, before you've got to inject. 5 volts, 50 to 80. Um, and uh, that's my basic setup. Um, that is 2,080 pixels with power injection, all 5 volt power injection absolutely everywhere. There's about 15 points from memory. That's my big LED sign. So 5 volts you have to inject in a lot of places. I think that's being injected about every 30 or 40 pixels. <laughs> that had to be rebuilt this for last year. Um, so we, we inject to keep the voltage high enough to keep the whites white is basically what it comes down to. Uh, and stop data issues and possible flickering. Now here we have a demo photo. We were talking earlier about the angle that you're looking at LEDs. You'll see that the one on the left is a yeah, left is a little bit sort of pink. Uh, if I turn that around 180 degrees, it looks exactly the same colour. So that's actually 50 pixels. Um, the far end is 3.7 volts, the near end is 4.95 volts. To the eye, they look identical. So that's the first and last pixel uh, in a set of 5 volt pixels. 100% intensity, I run all my show at 100%. Um, and it draws 2.48 amps. Gives you an idea of what it looks like. So I added another 50 at the end. And look at that last pixel, the one on the left hand side. That's remarkably red, and in fact, the, the photo doesn't do it justice. It was this dull, red, crappy glow. And in fact, that's pixel 96, because 97, 98, 99, and 100 didn't work. Um, and it only drew 2.93 amps. So you're not getting much more current, but you're getting twice as many LEDs. So therefore, the color looks absolutely terrible. That one in the middle um, there was really yellow. It wasn't quite edging on red. They tend to go yellow first, then they go red. Um, and 1.9 volts at the last end of the, the pixel, so well below the point at which 5 volt pixels will work. So what did I do? I added a power injection just to the hundredth pixel, and it works fine. That one in the middle to the eye, although it looks a bit crappy on the screen there, um, to the eye was as bright and the same colour as the other ones. A little bit better. <laughs> Not much. Um, so you can get away with injecting every 100 pixels in 5 volt. I wouldn't recommend it, but it does work. How do you power inject? All of that. <laughs> this actually works, and this is the way that I power inject most of my 5 volt stuff. The reason I do it this way, that the next picture is the way that the US guys say to do it. Uh, what is missing from there is fuses. Um, different topic entirely, but I use the one power supply via fuses into the pixel controller and out through the pixels. So the clock and data are going right through the whole lot. The power jumps to set points in the pixel string. I don't use... Um, Strips, I only use individual nodes, uh, and this works really well. Some people say you should actually disconnect the 12-volt um, the or 5-volt supply there. 
The US guys seem to love doing it this way. I don't. The reason I don't is if you're starting to reduce your voltage at that point, and this pixel here, the last pixel here, and this first pixel here are side by side, you will see a difference in color. Whereas if this goes from white to slightly yellow back to white, as it would in this setup, because it's a slight change in color, you'll never notice it. And I had a string that actually had this break last year, and everyone seen it. And everyone said, oh, why are those pink from halfway along there? It was simply because actually out of the node, it had broken the 12 volt or the 5 volt line. If I can make a comment, yep. not a criticism, but if I was doing that, I wouldn't run my power through the controller. So your positive and your negative is going into your very first set of pixels yep. up to the power supply. Purely because I don't want the power being dragged through the controller. Yep. If something goes wrong, I pull 50 million amps through the controller, it's going to burn out. Yep, hence the fuse on the controller. Um, but I tend to underrate my fuse on the controller. The three hundred dollar controller will always protect the twin set fuse. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah, I, I do tend to run mine directly to there rather than through the controller. But these were uh, images that I found on the net. But I do agree that is not a bad idea at all. Um, here is a multi-power supply setup. I don't do this at all, but I know some guys that have got really long roof lines and really big houses have had to actually do this. And basically, it's the same setup as before, in that one thing that you've got to do when you've got multiple power supplies, you've got to join the negatives up. Because the data is basically a voltage compared to the negative line. Personally, in this, I would have tried to run a a jumper between the, the V minuses, the negative lines. It doesn't matter, it will most likely work fine because they're all connected by the pixels. Having said that, I tried this at home on 450 pixels and four power supplies, it didn't work. Uh, and it was because as the power is going along, the voltage is actually rising at this point. Um, by the time I got about halfway along my 450, it was about second or third power supply. They didn't work. But as soon as I put a jumper between the two negatives, they worked fine. Um, I was running them at 100%. If I wound them down a little bit in intensity, they worked fine. One of the issues you can get with looping negative power supplies yep. is you create circular earth. You can get circular currents that will bring in noise and uh, play up. Now, it won't play up on the bench. It won't play up the way we showed you how to do it. You need to put them up on the roof. <laughs> uh, yeah, good point. And also, it's important you connect your negative from your pixels into your controller, not just your negative up to the negative going into your pixel controller. Because I've also had noise generate. If you don't, I don't. I actually, with my P2 setups, I've actually got a real look. Because the P2s don't have those that you don't have, they don't actually have any power in the actual controller. It's on how far away you fix up. What I do is I actually run just a little bit of the um, uh, alarm cable back to the controller to make sure that it's tied to the right voltage. And that way you're not going to draw much current through those um, those fairly thin cables. This is one that I found on the net that everyone said, oh, this is how you're supposed to wire up multi-controllers, uh, multi-power supplies in a controller. Can anyone, other than the guys that have had some experience, see a problem with this? Yeah. <laughs> you picked it straight away, so did yeah. I. Went, and I, I got shouted down. This was on a um, really a forum in the US that started with L O R. Um, <laughs> that one there, data only. So this power supply, there's no way this has got a. Basically, you look at the the power to the first pixel for the the um, data. Has to go back on a negative line. There's no negative connection back to that controller. So it doesn't work. And that was I said that's not going to work. You need to put just a negative from that point to there. It doesn't have to be a big current carrying thing because it's only data. Um, and they went, oh no, you don't have to. It's not yeah. going to work. The other point too is the controller draws through this five eight with current. So the power supply number one 
isn't unnecessary unless it's a location thing with house by ones. Oh, right. So you say you can actually feed that back to here and actually connect power back to the... On the picture, you can get rid of power supply yeah. one and just hook it up to power supply two. Yep. So power supply one is underutilised, is what you're saying. It's yeah. redundant in this, unless there's a physical dis a significant distance mm -hmm. between power supply one. Yep. And power supply because two. power supply one's not providing air power to any pixels. If if this line here was missing, and if power supply one was supplying, say, the first string, well, that might be okay. But obviously, you still need that negative back up there. And you can even use a plug pack or something like that for that power supply one. Basically, there's no right and wrong way of doing it. Um, but may I suggest trying everything in your shed or in your lounge room or in wherever you set up your lights. Try them with all the cables connected exactly like you are going to set up your show. So if you're going to have a 10 metre cable to your first pixel, please try it with that 10 metre cable to the first pixel. Because I guarantee if it's 2811 and you're trying to drive that over alarm cable, you've got a 50-50 chance of that working. And with my case, it's usually 50% no and 50% hell no. Out of the J16 controllers, I cannot drive more than about 2 metres to 2811s. Some of mine are 6 or 7 metre runs. So I power over uh, alarm cable and Cat5 data and a negative as a twisted pair. It's the only way I can use it. But having said that, I tried a, um, a Pi with a 15 meter cable. Worked fine.